If you have any formal training in electrical troubleshooting, you have undoubtedly heard of Ohm's law. But what does that mean in terms of practical application? I'm Pete Meyer, and this is Cardone ProTech. The Cardone ProTech series is produced in partnership with MotorAge. America's oldest trade publication for the automotive professional. Last time on ProTech, I introduced you to voltage, resistance, and current flow. In today's edition, we're going to focus on the relationship between the three and how it applies to practical, real-world electrical troubleshooting. Let's start with Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that voltage is equal to resistance, expressed in ohms, times current flow, expressed in amps. Do you remember what voltage is? Voltage is the difference in electromotive potential between two points in an electrical circuit. What about resistance? Resistance is the opposition to current flow, measured in ohms in an electrical circuit. Finally, how about current flow? Current flow is the measure of the movement of electrons in amps in a circuit. So how can voltage equal ohms times amps? Does that mean if I increase resistance, I'll increase voltage? It can be a little confusing. Ohm's law is not just a mathematical formula, though it can be used for that purpose. No, it's a lot more than that. It teaches us the fundamental relationships between the basic elements of an electrical circuit, voltage, resistance, and current. Here's what I want you to take away from Ohm's law. Voltage is needed to overcome the resistance in the circuit in order for current to flow. Back to our earlier question. I suggested that, according to the math anyway, if we increase the resistance of the circuit, then that should increase the voltage. Let's see if that's what really happens. Here's a sample circuit using a simple light bulb. Let's say we go ahead and turn that light bulb on and measure the voltage at the battery. You'll note the reading on the meter is 11.93 volts. Now when you say we add resistance and see if that 11.93 volts increases. Now for the resistance, I'm going to use another light bulb. It's the same type of light bulb that's already in the circuit, which means I should be doubling the resistance in the circuit, right? If that's the case, I should see a huge increase in voltage. Well, let's see, 12.04 volts. I wouldn't call that a huge increase, would you? What Ohm's law is really trying to teach us here is that if I add resistance, current flow is going to be decreased which is obvious from the fact that the light is now quite dim. So Ohm's law is telling me that if I want that current flow to be the same, I either have to decrease resistance or increase the amount of voltage supplied to the circuit. Well, let's think about all that for a moment. In this case, resistance went up, current went down. Well, if I reduce resistance in the circuit, Let's just say we get rid of the bulb we have, or the extra bulb. Current flow goes up. I want you to think of that as a seesaw. As resistance goes up, current flow goes down. And as resistance goes down, current flow goes up. Let's take a look at what the practical applications of that concept are. Do you remember what we learned last time? We talked about how everything in the circuit has resistance, but it's minimal compared to the device doing the work, the load. The load should be the primary source of resistance in the circuit, and thereby the component that's actually determining current flow, 
based on what we know so far about Ohm's law. The majority of electrical problems can be traced back to changes in the circuit's resistance. For example, if there's an open circuit, resistance becomes infinite and current flow becomes zero. We all know that, right? And if the circuit shorts to ground anywhere on the positive side of the circuit before the load, then resistance is going to drop to next to nothing and current flow is going to skyrocket. But what if we introduce a source of resistance that isn't supposed to be there? That extra resistance is going to reduce current flow throughout the entire circuit with obvious results. It's a light bulb that burns dim, a fuel pump that won't spin fast enough, a driver's door motor that won't raise the window. All of these can be caused by sources of resistance that occur from things like worn connections, bad grounds, corrosion somewhere in the circuit. These are all things that I call the thieves. So how do you catch these electrical thieves? Well, that, my friends, is the subject of our next Cardone ProTech video. I'll introduce you to a guy named Kershaw, and he'll help me explain a technique that every technician should know to improve their electrical troubleshooting skills. So in the meantime, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you know when those videos are ready for you to view. And if you have a question, feel free to email me. The email address is in the description for the video below.